In this video, I'll be replacing the AC compressor and receiver dryer on a 1988 Porsche 944 and converting the system from R12 to R134A refrigerant. The air conditioning system on the 944 uses an expansion valve setup, and it's really no different than any other automotive AC system with an expansion valve. So before we begin the repair, let's start with an overview of the primary system components. The first component in the air conditioning cycle is the compressor, which is located below the alternator on the left side of the engine compartment. The compressor takes low temperature refrigerant gas and compresses it into a high pressure, high temperature gas, where it's sent to the condenser. The AC condenser sits directly in front of the car's radiator and it acts to remove some of the heat from the refrigerant, which causes the refrigerant to change phase from a hot gas to a warm liquid. The warm liquid is then passed through the receiver dryer, which removes moisture from the refrigerant to maximize the efficiency of the heat exchange. The receiver dryer is a small canister located behind the driver's side headlight assembly, attached to which you'll find some high pressure and low pressure switches designed to protect the system components when the system pressure is out of specification. From here, the refrigerant leads to the cabin and ultimately the expansion valve located near the passenger side footwell near the center console by the firewall. The expansion of the warm liquid through the expansion valve causes a pressure drop and therefore a temperature drop in the refrigerant. So out of the expansion device comes a low temperature liquid refrigerant that is sent to the evaporator at the base of the HVAC assembly. The evaporator coil uses the low temperature refrigerant to absorb heat from within the cabin, where it then returns to the AC compressor as a low temperature gas and the cycle continues. As far as the electrical side goes, there is an air conditioning switch at the HVAC panel that should remain partially depressed in order for the compressor clutch to engage. There's also an AC system fuse and an AC relay located at the central electrical panel, both of which need to be intact to complete the compressor circuit. When considering an AC refrigerant conversion, various system components will be disconnected during the process, so you want to ensure the existing refrigerant is properly reclaimed by an AC technician before you begin. In the case of this car, the AC system has already been compromised and emptied for a number of years now. For this repair, I'll be replacing the old air conditioning compressor with a rebuilt Nippon Denso unit that's been pre-filled with ester oil. If you're planning to reuse your existing compressor when performing the R134A conversion, the compressor will still need to be removed so that the old mineral oil can be drained by turning the unit upside down and side to side while spinning the front hub of the clutch assembly to evacuate the oil. If you find that the clutch hub can't be turned, the compressor is likely seized and should be replaced. The clutch coil can also be tested by applying a ground connection to the compressor housing and a 12 volt power source to the positive clutch wire. The front clutch hub should then move or snap into place on the clutch pulley so that the two pieces can be turned in unison. If the front hub fails to move, that would indicate a potential coil problem. Once the compressor is fully drained of oil and its operation has been inspected, it will then need to be recharged with 5-6 to six ounces of ester oil, where an R12 setup uses only 3.3 ounces of oil. The compressor is secured to a mounting bracket from above using two bolts, a 17mm in front and a 13mm in back. To begin removing the compressor, we'll first loosen those two bolts, followed by the front two bolts securing the lower adjustment bar. Then the two jam nuts can be loosened so that the turnbuckle can be twisted to detension the belt. With the ribbed belt out of the way, the two hose connections to the compressor can be disconnected. They're held in place by 13mm bolts. After disconnecting the refrigerant lines and the AC clutch wire, the mounting bolts can be fully removed and the compressor pulled away from the car. Now that the compressor has been removed from the car, I'll need to swap over the OEM manifold to the replacement unit. This compressor kit I picked up from 944 online came with new O-rings for that application, as well as for all the other refrigerant line connections around the engine bay. Each O-ring should be lightly lubricated with compressor oil upon replacement to ensure proper sealing. With the manifold swapped over to the new compressor, the unit can be reinstalled on the car in the reverse order of removal. The ribbed belt should be tensioned to a deflection point of approximately 2 millimeters with moderate upward thumb pressure on the lower span. And with the proper tension set on the belt, all the mounting bolts can be tightened down. Next, I'm going to replace the O-rings at each connection point around the system. When converting to R134A, all the black rubber O-rings in the system should be replaced with the new green neoprene O-rings, as they're more resistant to the R134A refrigerant. Again, some ester oil should be applied to each O-ring during installation. The connections leading to the AC condenser can be problematic in removal, as that area catches quite a bit of moisture and the fittings are prone to oxidation. The lines there can be disconnected with the front spoiler in place, but the lower plastic air guide will need to be removed to make some space. Make sure to use two wrenches on each fitting for counter leverage because the condenser tubing can be bent and easily damaged. In this case, I've recently replaced those two O-rings during a front end rebuild on the car, so I'll be moving on to the receiver dryer. In order to replace the receiver dryer, we'll first remove the top section of the air filter housing to create some additional space. Next, both of the refrigerant lines at the top of the canister will be disconnected. 
The mounting bracket is pretty thin here and may not support the force needed for removal, but some counter leverage can be applied using a 17 millimeter open-ended wrench on top of the canister. The clamp is held in place by an eight millimeter bolt and after removing the bolt and loosening the clamp, the new receiver dryer can be installed along with some new O-rings for each connection point. Next up is to install the R134A charge port adapters to the existing R12 service ports. There are a number of different kits available for these, some of which include a universal set of O-rings and some of which do not. There are also two basic types of adapters. One style requires that the old R12 valve cores are first removed and the other style does not. This kit from Pelican Parts falls into the latter category. The shorter, wider adapter is for the high pressure fitting, and looking at it, it's basically a sleeve that threads onto the R12 Schrader valve where it uses the existing core. The taller, thinner adapter is for the low pressure fitting, and this one has a depressor inside that looks like a valve core, but it's not spring loaded, so again, it's simply threaded onto the R12 valve, and the depressor acts as an extension to accentuate the existing valve core. This kit also includes some replacement valve cores that can be swapped out using a valve core removal tool if the existing cores are bent or damaged. Once you've obtained a set of adapters, it's time to locate the high pressure and low pressure service ports on the car. For whatever reason, Porsche changed the orientation of the AC lines as well as the location of the high pressure and low pressure charge ports over the years. On the very early cars, 1983 to 1984, the high side connection is located at the receiver dryer behind the driver's side headlight assembly and the low side is positioned on top of the compressor. Because of its tight orientation, these early cars will require a 90 degree adapter fitting on the low side that mounts to the compressor. The 1985 and a half model years feature the low side connection at the left strut tower and the high side at the compressor. On the 1986 models, you'll likely find both the charge ports located side by side near the strut tower, with the high side being closer to the fender. And the arrangement was changed yet again in 1987, where the high side fitting is now located by the left strut tower and the low side directly at the compressor. That being said, it's best to trace your lines and properly identify the connections for your particular car. From a routing perspective, the high pressure connection is usually placed somewhere between the compressor and the expansion valve, and the low pressure connection is usually found between the evaporator and the compressor. When installing the adapters, a light coating of ester oil should be applied to the O-rings inside each fitting, and be careful not to over tighten the adapters as it can damage the seal and cause leaks in the system. Before charging the AC system with refrigerant, I'm first gonna perform some work on the HVAC control panel. Most of the functions on the existing panel work fine, but the cover for the AC switch recently cracked and now won't stay in place. The snowflake symbol has also turned into more of a snowball over the years of use, so I'm gonna replace the AC switch on the panel. These switches can also fail internally, and if your switch doesn't remain slightly depressed when engaging the system, the switch or the control panel will need to be replaced. The AC switches cost about $180 for the OEM Porsche units and $130 for the aftermarket Euro ones. There are a couple different types of boards used for these panels, most of which require the AC switch pins to be desoldered and resoldered when installing a new switch on the board, with only the very later cars featuring a plug and play panel. The entire control panel is still available from Porsche for about $900, and used ones can generally be found for a couple hundred dollars. I have a pre-owned one here that I picked up that has a nicely conditioned AC switch, so I'm gonna combine the best parts from the two panels. To remove the control panel, the ventilation slider knobs need to be removed so that the plastic faceplate can be gently pried off. The faceplate clips into place on the dash panel, so it's best to use some flat tools or trim removal tools to carefully work your way around the plate to release all the clips. These plastic faceplates are known to break quite easily, but if you do end up cracking the plate, new ones are available for about $40. With the plate removed, the four Phillips head screws securing the HVAC panel can then be removed. Next, the assembly can be pulled from the dash, and finally, the three electrical connectors released from behind the panel. Once you've swapped out any needed parts here, installation is the reverse of removal. I've got the refurbished HVAC panel reinstalled on the car now, and all the functions seem to be working, so it's time to recharge the AC system. At this point, you can either make an appointment at a local air conditioning shop or prepare to refill the system on your own if you have a vacuum pump and a manifold gauge set. The system will need to be vacuumed down for a couple hours where leaks can be assessed while the system is under vacuum. Once the system is deemed leak free, the charge process can begin. The R134A fill capacity is usually about 80 to 85% of the R12 amount listed on the wheel arch, which equates to approximately 26.8 to 28.5 ounces of R134A. With the compressor running, typical fill pressures on the 944 will fall between 30 and 40 PSI on the low side and 150 to 200 PSI on the high side, but depending on the ambient air temperature and your individual system, results may vary a bit. When refilling the system, don't forget to bleed the air from the yellow fill line after the first can is connected, and make sure the system is only charged from the blue low side connection. 
the red valve for the high side should always remain fully closed when filling the system. Pressure should initially increase more quickly on the low side until the compressor kicks on, which generally happens when the high side reaches about 30 psi. If the compressor clutch fails to engage above 30 to 40 psi, the air conditioning fuse, the relay, and the low pressure switch should be checked. If the 7.5 amp fuse at position 29 checks out okay, the AC relay at position G17 can be bypassed by applying a jumper to pins 30 and 87A. If this engages the compressor clutch when the car is on, the relay has failed and should be replaced. But if the clutch fails to engage, the low pressure switch can also be temporarily bypassed by applying a jumper to the two electrical terminals at the switch. And once the optimum refrigerant charge is added, the overall system performance can be checked. In this case, I added two 12 ounce cans of R134A and measured out an additional three ounces from a third can using a scale. With 27 ounces of Freon in the system at an ambient air temperature of 65 degrees, the gauges were reading about 30 psi on the low side and about 200 psi on the high side, which falls within specification and the cabin air was quite cool and comfortable. To finish off the AC conversion, an R134A sticker should be placed in the engine compartment to note that the car is using R134A refrigerant. The sticker will typically designate the amount of the refrigerant used, the type and amount of system oil, and the date of the conversion. And that will complete the R134A AC conversion on your Porsche 944.